Good morning, this is Ed Gray, the Commish, with Behind Your Mic, with comedian Edwin Douglas. You heard me, and we'll be right back after the break. Walking into a fantastic clean office. Or coming home to a fantastic clean home. Hi, my name is LaMonica, CEO and founder of Fantastic Four Cleaning Services, providing fantastic services for you because that's what we aim to do. Give me a call at the office at 469-730-3054. All right, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Behind your mic, I'm your host with my special guest, the commissioner, Ed Gray. Now, I gave you guys my word that before we go any further, I have to put the man up there first. I want to thank God for a breath to breathe, a mind to think, strength to my eyes to see, voice to speak, the sound in my ears to hear, and the blood and the blood of Jesus. Now, you heard me on that, now go run and tell that. Now I've got all that out the way. Ed, I want to say thank you for coming out, man. Thank you, man. And, uh, Appreciate it. Um, we got a lot to talk about, man. Uh, we, we really do. And before I say anything else, I want to say thank you also for inviting me on your show. Right. Uh, and see what we're up today. I see that. The Lord is good. Yeah, he, he, he all good. The time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is. Uh, what your childhood was like back in the day? That's a long time ago, first of all. <laughs> uh, I graduated from David W. Carter High School, Carter okay. High School. That's where I got my roots and everything from. Um, graduate, two time graduate of uh, Southern Methodist University. Yes, I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and I'm pursuing a PhD as well. But I would be amiss not to think about people who got me started. Okay. Uh, graduated from uh, also El Centro and <laughs> also uh, Atwell Junior High School. <laughs> and at uh, Atwell Junior High School. We got a lot of yeah, common, man. I'm yeah, not going to hear you. You're not going to go that way on you, did you? You started laughing already when I started naming all the school. But, when, was, when you were there with the cat, by the time I got there, they took that last word. Well, when I was there, <laughs> your father was there. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And I was influenced by him as well. I was an eighth grade student of his. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he got me involved a little bit in, in giving back to the community. So mm -hmm. I'm carrying on his legacy just like you carried on his legacy mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when I was laughing at him, you were saying, hey, I'm central because this. It's so funny. When my dad was working part time at Air Central, mm -hmm. I was in his classroom <laughs> in the summertime. And so when you said Air Central, Hackwell, yes, I was following his footsteps. Yes, he was doing what any uh, father and son will do, you know, together and, and educate one another. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about footsteps, you know. And so that's what I was laughing at. You know. Well, you know, your footsteps have to, they have to be ordered. And in it being ordered, it takes a community to raise a child. And, uh, it takes many people in the community to raise a child, more so than just your parents. It takes an extended community. Uh, uh, individuals that you see at church, individuals that you see in mom and pop stores, or, uh, or pop water football league. Those are the people who influenced me, and that's how I got to where I'm at now. It, it took more than just me reading a book or deciding one day that I wanted to be involved in, in politics or anything like that. No, he's he telling it all because of how my dad was reading a book, you know, and, and I'm laughing because the spirit, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because through you, through me, through him, and many other educations. The, the ironic thing about that is I didn't even know that was your father till you posted something on Facebook. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, it's funny you said that, I was in church today. And this other gentleman, we talk every day in fellowship. And I swear, God did today. He came to me. He said, "Man, he said, Sam don't say, man, I didn't realize Henry was your father." And I started smiling at him because what you and I had shared a conversation about a month ago. Yeah. You know? And so I thought, okay, Lord, okay, Dad, you 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 right there with me in spirit, you know. Mm -hmm. And and to hear. Someone say, you know, your relative or your dad, that put a smile on my face because now, 
y'all were probably most influenced to anything else. Me, I was hard headed. No, 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 I was hard headed, man. I, uh, he, he had to stay on me because I wanted to do what I wanted to do, not knowing that um, he was very serious. I was the first born, first boy, only boy. And so when you're a man, you got your son, your child is your, is, is your son, the first one. You're going to put a lot into it, too. And so when I listen to a lot of people, when they tell me how oh, your dad was this, and um, that put a smile on my face. Well, you know, that's what we need. We need more men such as your father was, and, and the men that are running dads and fathers on TV network. For, for them mm. to stand up and, and be men mm. uh, like they were born to be and, and continue to lead our nation and our country. And this is one of the things that is, uh, we're lacking mm -hmm. in the black community as a whole. And not the fact that we don't have any men out there. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that we don't have as many men taking leadership roles mm -hmm. that they should take. Mm -hmm. And once they go ahead and take those leadership roles and realize where they are in the community and that they're supposed to be heads, mm -hmm then we'll go further along. We are the only nation that has a matriarchal society, if you will. We depend more so on women than we do men to lead us. So this is where we have to be. I'm not saying anything uh, against women, because, you know, as, as Tupac said, we get our name from a woman, we got a game from a woman. So, you know, we have to pay homage to them as well. But we're not paying homage to ourselves. And this is how we have to go ahead and proceed. That has been, I don't have a ministry at all. Um, as I oftentimes joke, I, I don't want nobody to catch me up on something that they want to perceive that I shouldn't be doing. Right, right, right. So I want to go ahead and say that first and foremost. My ministry, if you will, is to go ahead and be the best and lead my people. Right. Not to a promised land, but to a better land. Right. Because only God can lead you to a promised land. That's it. That's it. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say Seven five two three two zip code. Right. When you hear me say that, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? <laughs> Glen Heights, uh, not Glen Heights, Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks. Okay. Glen Oaks. Okay. That, that's the first deal that I think of. I'm thinking Glen Heights. I'm thinking new school. I need to go back old school. Okay, okay. But uh, Glen Oaks, uh, that's the first thing. That... Name some of the things in in your age group because I'm not too far behind you. I remember Quarry yeah, Steers. That was it. Quarry uh, Steers. Uh, Hopes and Keats, uh, Shopping Center, and, and, and uh, uh, since I'm a little older than you, I'll probably name some clubs, studios. You go ahead, you go ahead and name them. I've done that studio. too. Studio. <laughs> Bernard's. Pizazz. Pizazz, baby, you know. That was what I remember. Okay. We was, uh, I was at a, uh, an event for New Year's Eve, and we were naming all the uh, nightclubs and, and places that we've gone back in the day. And so when we were doing that on New Year's Eve, I said, I'm going to throw that head when I do the interview. And well, that's because you know I still go out a lot. <laughs> so you know, I, I promised people I was going to do 30 days, 30 nights, 30 parts. Wow. I eclipsed it. And now I realize I'm an old man. And that's how old I was. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm too old to be doing that. Again. Well, it, 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 it's too hard. You know, partying got to come to an end. The body will let you know you can't do what you to yeah, the next time I'm on your show, I want to be up a little higher because I got arthritis in the knee. Uh, <laughs> man, that means we, we all falling apart somewhere. I ain't you know? falling apart, I just said that I'm right. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what kind of music back in the day that you were crazy about? If you have you been Periscope lately? You, you know about Periscope? Yeah, man, of course. I, I want you to go on Periscope and add George Clinton. Because George Clinton has, he periscopes everything, man. So, you know, uh, the funk, the funk, man, I, I love funk, man. Do you remember when Booster and Parliament and Parliament and Funk and Della came to the Cotton Bowl? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, I remember that. I wasn't there, but I was there. That was when they did the uh, Underwater Sea. That's it. That's that was it. it. They did that one. <laughs> but, you know, hey, this is a... Uh, the deal that we got here, we're talking about now, we have some great music that's coming out right now. Mm -hmm. Erica Baidu is one of those that's people it. who is fascinating to me as well. That's it. That's and it. she plays neo jazz, so I love jazz. That's it. That's love it. jazz. So if we go into your car or walk inside your car, what CD is in your car right now? Tony Braxton right now. 
I ain't listening to Tony Braxton. Right I got this thing for Tony, so if Tony's listening right now, <laughs> so I, I promise I won't see you no more letters, baby. <laughs> but no, I love Tony Braxton. Okay, okay, okay. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to speak more about his opinion, his thought, and his opinion after the break. Have you ever had a question related to child support, divorce, CPS? Call the Attorney General or maybe an attorney and they just gave you a runaround? Where do you go to get help? Contact Dad's Fathers of Texas. Yes, they are child support specialists. Dad's Fathers of Texas can answer your question, help file paperwork, and help find a family law attorney. Dad's Fathers of Texas, making child support simple. We're here today at the uh, Texas Bass uh, Mass Incarceration, <laughs> and uh, I'm here today with a uh, Mr. Greg, right? Ed I'm, a huge, I'm a Ed Greg. I'm a huge Facebook fan of yours, and you don't know that, but now you do. And uh, I'm with Dad's Fathers TV Network. What we do, we focus on fathers who are dealing with the child support issue side of it. And we, a lot of people don't realize child support feed into that mass incarceration. Because what happened? The father don't pay child support. Then from there, they're sentenced to 180 days in jail. Then you got that mark on you. And if you don't continue to pay, you uh, put back in jail. But then if you avoid paying by quitting your job, it's a felony. Uh, so, with all your expertise and, and, and uh, TV show experience, number one, what did you take from this today and how can our advice benefit some of the young folks out there who are about to go through this avenue? What advice would you give them? Well, thank you for having me on your show and I appreciate it. You know, one of the takeaways that I received from this is that as a instructor of mine in high school said you're going to be born with two strikes against you. First, you're black and first, you're young. Second, you're young, rather. One of those you're going to outgrow and the other is always going to be with you. Now, the, the great takeaway from that is that you're put in a situation in which you're into a system and that system is set up for you to fail. And what you're talking about is very important is alerting the people, alerting our young men not to have one of those marks against you. Right. So this is my encouragement to you that are listening out there now. Do right in the community first of all. And then the second of all, what you need to go ahead and do is make sure that if you do be placed on paper to make you make sure you pay the paper. Right. Make sure you pay for it. Right. So if you pay the paper, then you won't be placed on further paper because that way you'll be further in, si in the situation. Absolutely. Which can lead to mass incarceration. Absolutely. Mass incarceration process is something that's from cradle to grave. And if we're not too careful about that, we'll be raising up another generation that we're perpetuating a new Jim Crow. And maybe the new Jim Crow is the same old Jim Crow we just now knew something about. Right, I think it has put a different face to it in order to achieve the long-term goal that is thrown out at the short. Right, and what you're, what you're talking about is, is very important. You know, young men don't have a job, and they don't have a job, and when they don't have a job, then they don't pay the child support. When they don't pay the child support, then after that they decide that they're going to be placed on further paper, and then after that they have a felony. A conviction on them. Yep. A felony conviction for not having any money. Right. That's what we're talking about. Right. And, and, and that comes back along with by uh, having a offense that you can't get a job. And since you don't have a job, you can't pay your child support. So you can't uh, pay your child support, so you back rent. And it's a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. And, and that feeds into the mass incarceration. And after you watch this video, you'll see it's a vicious cycle. So the first thing first to prevent a cycle is never to get into it. That's correct. That's, That's correct. correct. So if you're having issues out there, address the issues first before it gets to this cycle. Well, sir, I appreciate it. Thank you. I enjoy what you're doing. Absolutely, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that clip. I know we're here with our special guest, the one and only, the commitment. Ed Gray. Ed, um, I followed you uh, for a long time, for like four years, and you're very, very outstanding what you do. You're very great. The greatness is in you. Um, I have to tell you that because what you do in the Dallas Fort Worth area and plus in the Southwest area plus America, um, you're good. Appreciate it. You're good. You're laid back. It's smooth. You kind of remind me of uh, you. No, no, the other <laughs> edge. <laughs> the other edge, you know. Uh, who was or who was the person that you would look at uh, on TV to be a commentator? Or, uh, who would you look up to? 
Brian Gump. Okay. Because what he does on TV and commentary, he, he takes it more so from the sports perspective, perspective rather, and he's moved it to a social mm -hmm. perspective as well. The shows that he's done mm -hmm. on real sports and other shows that he's done, it, it, it's, it's more than just sports itself. Mm -hmm. It has deep sociological value to it, and that's pretty much who I would want to uh, pattern mm -hmm. what I do. I was looking for you to say, Ed Brad. Ed Bradley smooth too, you know, he was smooth too. But he was a a, a journalist mm -hmm. and and Gump that's, was, that's who you remind me of. Gump was a journalist as well. I'm not a journalist, so I'm just a But guy you have that beard, you know, you got that you know, you got that smooth, you know, look for T V. Well that's because hey, I'm gonna tell you why I grew this beard like this, right? <laughs> I grew this beard originally because I was on vacation. As you know, I just recently finished a four-week vacation. Okay. Just took the whole month of December out. You know. I have uh, 36 years of employment with my employer, and I decided, okay. well, hey, I don't know whether I'm going to come back for year 37, so I said, I'll just take a month off to decide. Mm -hmm. So uh, previously before, what I did was I take two, three weeks off. Mm -hmm. So I didn't grow, I, I didn't shave, right? Okay. So during this time period, I got interviewed by WFAA to do Inside Texas Politics. Yeah. So they came in and they said, man, we like what you look like. You know, we got this player in it. I said, it's cool. So I did first January, February, March seconds. Then April came along. The springtime, I said, I'm going to shave off the women. It's time to get over. Mm -hmm. So I shaved it off and came in and did the April segment. And, uh, and, and the producer said, my goodness. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I already know there wasn't no, uh, can, I, can I say that? I know there wasn't no black man. <laughs> no, it was a sister. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it, 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 it was a sister. She said, my good. But come on back here anyway. We'll do it anyway. And I said, oh, well, she obviously liked the beard. Mm. So May came along, the beard was back. She said, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. So, so she's already She's out Pitching here. you how Ed Gray put the look on, on WFAA, right. China, hey, Dallas, so, Texas. So now this is it. This is the okay. brand. Okay. okay. Well, the suits, I, I, wore, I wore suits when I was in your father's class. Yeah, I know. Let me tell you something. You did not know this. I knew this. My dad had a favorite student. Okay. And I'm going to mess you up on, on some names. I don't want to actually say the last name. But he had had names that he was crazy about because you got to study, you got to want to learn, you got to motivate it, and that, that motivated him because you guys wanted to learn. Yeah. And uh, one of them was my ex-wife. You know, I'm going to say, you know, let's stay right where it is. You're going to say your ex-wife? No, 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 let's stay right there. <laughs> Why are you doing it? You just introduced that and just, you just, my ex <laughs> And that, was, you know, boom, and that was it. <laughs> That's it, man. But but my dad has spoken uh, great things, good things about all of you guys. Okay. And we have a conversation, you know. And I came home and said, How you have a good day, you know. And he'll tell me and talk to me, you know, about the people that he, he felt like that they accomplished some things that he worked hard for because he's a teacher, an educator, he was a minister, you know, and that was his, he was driven. When it came to me, I was the opposite, <laughs> you know. So, so I'd rather hear him talk about other people, other kids, okay? Because I didn't even know what I really wanted to do, you know. I was spiritual, but I was trying to. That's what well, you know. I ain't even trying to do all this, you know. But to hear him come home every day, to hear his work, talk about his work, a thing that he enjoyed doing because he worked hard to get, you know where you uh, want to go in education, doctor, master degree, all, all that, but, you know, so when I follow you, I follow you for a reason, because of the name. So it wasn't like I was just pushing button, I already knew. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those brothers that sit back in the back and just wait on God. And then when God give me the green light, booyah. And then that, that's how I put it. Now, what I want to do here is, is um, you're on China 8. And you have your voice, your opinion. My voice, my opinion. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to name a few things, you know, one name at a time. And just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton more than likely will be the Democratic nominee. There's no other way you can point it. She has no credible 
opposition. Yes, I said credible opposition. Bernie Sanders is not credible opposition. And this other guy, O'Malley, he's best known for being the uh, antagonist on The Wire. Okay. And uh, The Wire TV show that used to be on HBO. If, if that's your claim to fame, he's not going to get the nomination at all. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, how about Donald Trump? <laughs> how many more minutes we have? Uh, Donald, Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump at this point has the inside track to get, getting the Republican nomination. And the funny thing about that is that this country pretty well does not like people that are rich. Mm -hmm. But what we experience, Edwin, is that he's going to restore back to certain people mm -hmm. in America the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Okay. And what I'm saying by this is it's a lot of, I wouldn't say it's racial, mm -hmm. racially involved into it, but it goes into a supremacy clause okay. Okay. that the United States has. And what I mean by supremacy clause that the United States has is that there are certain groups of people mm -hmm. that are supposed to be on top. And so far in this 225 plus years of, mm -hmm. uh, of America, it's always been white males mm -hmm. with money mm -hmm. that has been on top. Very seldom in this country has there been anything or anybody that was not a white male with money that has ruled the country. Now what President Obama has done in mm -hmm. the past couple of years has turned that upside down, hmm. that now you get somebody who was, uh, for essentially purposes, was raised by a single mother, mm -hmm. or as we do in black parents' household, raised by your grandma, okay. grandfather, in that kind of situation, and he's also black. Okay. He also comes from a part of the country that most people don't know nothing about other than being on a postcard. I'm not talking about South Side Chicago, <laughs> I'm talking about a wife. Mm -hmm. and, and Donald Trump is supposed to restore America back to where it's supposed to be. Rich white men running the country. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. That's why it's called my voice, my opinion. I see. I go, up, I go deep. I don't I know what it is. I love every bit of it. How about this name here? I'm going a, I'm to a flip it on you. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby right now, and I see some people in the audience with raising their eyebrows up and everything. I did a post on Bill Cosby uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of days back mm -hmm. on Facebook, and I said that I find it somewhat ironic that the American judicial system is going after Bill Cosby in a way in which they didn't go after Officer Hotspur in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. when he raped 14 women. Mm -hmm. They didn't go, and they were black women. Mm -hmm. They didn't go. He didn't go after him like that. But they going after Bill Cosby in this situation. Grand jury finds. Uh, the person who shot Tamir Rice, they decide not to go ahead and indict. They go ahead in this particular situation, go back years and years and years back. Did you think out of all 14 women, at least one was Kevin Two? Oh, you talking about old Bill, uh, Bill Cosby? At least, I mean, you got to think about it. 14 or how many it may be, could one be telling the truth? Do I think one could be telling the truth? Probably is. Because but, I, but you know, this is this is what I'm saying here. What happens between a man and a woman when they're with each other and no one else is around, no one can know about these kind of things. And I don't like to pass judgment on the world cause you know, kind of situation. But I do uh, say this that right now he almost made the race. He almost finished his life without any kind of scandals. And anyone involved in, in politics or uh, public life has to deal with that constantly covering over their head. Mm -hmm. That anything that they have done can come back to haunt them. Right, right. And everyone has done something that can come back to haunt them. Okay. Bill, I'll be praying for you, man. I'll be praying for Bill Cosby. How about uh, Dallas Cowboys own Dez Bryant? Dez Bryant? He's a great talent, a great football talent. I don't, I don't look at him no other way. I don't, I don't look at athletes, and I hung around quite a few athletes in my day and time. But I look at them, first of all, that's the job that they perform. They've done, they're playing a game that you and I used to play at, at, on our backyards, and they're still doing it at a highly acceptable uh, skill level than we've ever done before, 20, 30 years after I've done it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I view them as. It, it's personal life. 
I mean, you know, uh, again, it's, it's personal. Okay. I got a good one for you. Kobe Bryant on time. Everyone's going to miss Kobe after he retires. It's just like uh, people remember you when you're gone. They want to go ahead and give you accolades then. Mm -hmm. I think he's I think he's been an exceptional great talent. But I still don't like the way he threw my boy Shaq under the bus. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a big Laker fan. I'm a like big Laker fan, but he should have threw my boy under the bus. <laughs> Say, you know, you know, Kobe come talk about Shaq do it. No. Hey, come on, man. Come on. Uh, and I'm going to give you one more. Uh, Natalie Cole. We've got two minutes. Natalie Cole, the first time I ever recall hearing Natalie Cole sing, your father played it in our class. I was waiting on you to say that. <laughs> he was crazy about that. He was crazy about, about Natalie Cole. Cole. He was crazy. You're right. Was You're, crazy right. Crazy. You're right, man. I was waiting on you to say that, man. I was he was crazy about He that. played that song. Remember those long stereo? Uh -huh. He played that song over. And over and over. Hey, play it again. And, I, and that's when they had the 45. Right. You know, and I kept playing it. I want to hear some Earth, Wind, and Fire. Play it again, you know. But you're right, Ed. I appreciate that. But what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Ed Gray, his voice, his opinion, after the break. No gimmicks. No fake, stupid conversations. Just real talk and real help from a real lawyer. If you've been injured in a car accident, I'm sure you're worried about transportation, medical bills, lost wages, and getting real compensation for your pain and suffering. I'm attorney Roderick White, and if you want real answers to your car wreck questions and real help with your car wreck problems, call me at 214 or 817. I got you. All right. Thanks for enjoying that clip. We're back here behind your mic. I'm your host, comedian Edwin Douglas, with my special guest, the commission. Ed Gray, Ed, you had me laughing before we went on break, man. I was, uh, it was amazing mm -hmm. that you, you remember that. <laughs> yeah, that so much you had to, you had to get some water on that. Yeah, yeah. Was laughing. yeah, because I feel like he, he may be sitting right here, you know, probably plug something in your ears and say that, man. But that was, that was good, man. Uh, what do you have coming up? Well, one of the things I wanted to go ahead and talk to you about is. Uh, concern most about not right now is the mass incarceration rate that we have in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. The state of Texas has the largest mass incarceration rate of anywhere else in America. We seem to be incarcerating not just African American males, but people, regardless of uh, class, color, uh, or gender. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's one of the things I am uh, going to be uh, talking about. We have Dr. Erwin Seamstead, who will be on our show, on the Commission Radio Show, in the month of February. Okay. And one of the things I want you to consider, and I want our public to consider, mm -hmm. is about equal rights for fathers okay. Okay. when it comes to child visitation rights. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a criminalization of child support. It seems to be a criminalization of child visitation orders. Give an example, and and I, I have somewhat of working knowledge of this. I've been married twice. Don't feel bad. And, I've, been and, 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 I've been there two times myself. Don't, don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. But you know, uh, when I saw that court order, the court order said that I had the right to visit my own child. But you had the right to visit your own child during a certain period of the year mm -hmm. or a certain period of the week. Uh, that got to me. Mm -hmm. But more so than anything else is that when you have some people who go through these court order visitations or they pay child support mm -hmm. and they lose their job mm -hmm. and they still have to pay child support. They're not deadbeat dads. Mm -hmm. They're just people who went across bad times. And then they get behind on their child support. Mm -hmm. Then they begin to get a record for being behind on their bills. Mm -hmm. See, in America, what we had before in the past, you couldn't put somebody in jail because of debt. But you still can put somebody in jail in America for debt if it's child support. That's one of the things I wanted to talk to, mm -hmm. to America about. And I probably will be talking to America about that in the next couple of weeks. 
controversy because there's always a, a perception that, that black men, specifically black men, don't care about their children. Mm -hmm. and they dodge in child support, and that's that not necessarily the case. On your radio show, uh, let's talk about that. Who are some of the uh, some of your guests? Uh, you would say the best interview that you had on the show. They all great guests, and they all given great interviews. And some are exceptional, uh, exceptional uh, great interviews as well. So just point one person I say on the day, which is absolutely. I, I wouldn't want to go ahead and say that because that would be besmirching someone else who's great. But coming to mind some that the viewers, the listeners rather, have called in and wrote about and said that this was absolutely great. This, these are some of the people they, they had mentioned. The Nation of Islam, when they came on the show, with Minister Robert Mohammed. When they came on the show, when they came on the show, it was, you, you remember the, the scene on the Malcolm X? Well, Denzel went like, now, that's how the brothers came in, man. They wow. came in just like that. Wow. They came in with eight of them come in. Strong, with bow ties. All bow ties. Oh, man. I, I, when I came to your studio, your studio was nice. I was received at the front door and everything. Mm -hmm. But, man, if I was with the Nation of Islam, it'd be one on the side over here, the other one on the side over there, the other one being over I know. I know how they roll. roll. I know how they roll, man. Um, Another great interview uh, that we've uh, had a great uh, amount of uh, accolades from, his, his uh, followers, uh, has been uh, Pastor Freddie Haynes. He came in. I did a video clip with him yesterday that I posted. We did our archive. He's talking about Carter High. No, I'm not talking about that. Pastor Freddie Haynes. Okay, Freddie Haynes. Freddie Haynes. Then I'm going to go back to Carter High. Okay. Carter High okay. was a great interview as well. Okay. So we okay. did that one. So those are three, three great ones. Okay. Got Freddie Haynes and got Carter High. Um, and let me go ahead and say Abner Haynes. Okay. Abner Haynes and uh, Abner Haynes is. Uh, I, you know what I would like to have? Them? I would like to have uh, somewhat of a movie to be listed on what Abner Haynes is doing in the state of Texas. And why is that? Before Abner Haynes played football in the state of Texas, nobody else played football. Mm. in the state of Texas, on a college level. Okay. He was the very first person to play college football in the state of Texas. Mm. It was against the law, it was when he played football in Texas. I, 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 as a college student. Mm. They sent you out of state. Uh, mm. Bubba Smith and Tony Smith, all those people went to Michigan. Mm -hmm. And they didn't play football in the state of Texas. Mm. Mm. Only way you could play football in the state of Texas and go to a white school. You could. Okay. You had to play college ball, you had to play Perry View, Texas Southern. That was it. Okay. But he played at the University of North Texas and he helped integrate not only University of North Texas, mm -hmm. he helped integrate college football. And then as a professional, mm -hmm. playing with the Dallas Texans, uh, not the Houston Texans, not the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys, Dallas. but the Dallas, Dallas Texans. With they now the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs. Gotcha. Right. He played football here and was the first uh, great back Dallas has ever had. Played at Lincoln High School. And this, this guy's tremendous. He, he also uh, moved the AFL, uh, AFL Pro Bowl game mm -hmm. from New Orleans and moved it out and did a boycott. First black person to do a boycott or something. Mm. Okay. You know, not the University of Missouri when they said they weren't going to play. That wasn't the first time. Right, right, right. Not Cassius Clay, not Muhammad Ali, but it was Cassius Clay at that time. Not Cassius Clay when he decided he wasn't going to be a nun. It was Abner Haynes who said, no, none of the black players are playing in the AFL Pro Bowl game. Wow. We're not playing. You guys must keep up with Ed Gray because he knows his history. Yes, he does. I'm going to take you back. Do you remember in the city of Dallas, before it was Malcolm X, Boulevard, before it was Martin Luther King Boulevard, do you remember the name of both those, those boulevards? Wow, a long time, man. Talk about Forrest. Uh, Forrest was Martin Luther King, right? And what was Malcolm X? Malcolm X? Man, you got me on that one. It's been that long ago. What was it? I'm asking you, bro, because you the man with the history. Man, <laughs> I, 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 does America know? That's what now, I, I, I know. 
I'm, 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 I know. I'm just trying to make you think. You give up? Oakland. Far as to know, man. I, you know what it is? You know? I done lost myself Dallas credibility right now. They ain't gonna let me over the. Malcolm X was Oakland Avenue and Forest uh, Avenue. I, I drew a blank, man. I drew a blank, man, because I'm I'm still on on Forest Avenue and I'm still remembering uh, city lights yeah. 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 and places like that. And I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Telling, I'm going. You tell me that, and I'm going I'm going back yeah. on that. But yeah, Oakland. Yeah. Now, we last time I was in the studio, uh, I was on the radio show, and after uh, the show, we hung around a little bit. Myself, yeah. you. Uh, Shucky Ducky and a uh, few other guys. Uh, that was good. Was cool. You Shucky guys were educating me. And you said some things, man. Uh, even uh, 75 Simple Expressway, there was a name, and I didn't know that. It was, uh, you go further north past Arapaho. You remember the lane was two lanes? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it was a name, it was a female name. And I was going around asking a lot of people. I didn't know I had to bring a map when I came here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, 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 but that let you know uh, how much history well, the, the, people need to the know. The history about part of Dallas, and I think this is something that, that we have to tune into, is that whenever you change the name or something, and we just changed, mm -hmm. you said Oakland, Malcolm X, and, uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X are the only places. They only met in two two places. Mm -hmm. In Selma, Alabama, they met. Mm -hmm. Ma Malcolm and Martin actually met in Selma, Alabama during the Voting Rights Act 65. Mm -hmm. They were both actually there. That picture that you may see that only taken one time, they, they actually met there. And the only place in addition to that mm -hmm. is uh, absolutely on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King in South Dallas. Mm -hmm. But once you change the name or something, be wary of what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. West Dallas has changed. Mm -hmm. okay, when you cross in Commerce Street and you go straight over the bridge, mm -hmm. the Margaret Hunt Bridge, it's a nice bridge and everything they got built. They didn't build that bridge just for people. Right. Like you or I. Right. They built it for people that are otherwise. And I mean otherwise by this, I ain't talking about otherwise in skin color. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about also gentrification. Gentrification means removing poor people and putting in middle class people. Middle class people, it doesn't matter. Middle class and upper middle class, white and black. We used to call them buppies, black urban professionals and young. Buppies. So that's what you end up having to have. So now they've taken that whole area over there by, by what was a silver. Mm -hmm. That whole area is changing. And you go down uh, further south and you go down by what used to be uh, University of North Texas mm -hmm. at Dallas, mm -hmm. and you go to UNTD, now you're changing uh, Houston School Road. Now that's gonna be something someone else gonna ask on that. What was Houston School Road, what is now? University Drive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, University Drive, now you're gonna change all that. Once you change all that, you change the neighborhood, the next thing you do is you change the complexion. Before we go here, you got to say over there, let everybody know where they can find you. Or oh, they can man, tone man, in. Man. You know, just, just, just hold this shirt up. Let, let, let them know. Man, we have a lot of these. And, and I promise I ain't worn this one. It's written. <laughs> man, but it's at the, at the bottom of the stack of shirts. These are the Commiss Radio okay. show, talk show. want to go ahead and give this to you. Oh, I appreciate and this, this man. is the, the last of the ones. That's why it's, oh, it's kind of... Yeah, we're gonna need to iron this next time. It's all good, man. I'm putting in a frame. I'm gonna do it. But go ahead, but <laughs> iron it first, man. And, and then you know, look, this is perfect, man. Same color of dad and father. <laughs> That's so it. it good, man. But you can get these shirts if you can call into the radio show. Also, you can call into the commission. I'm gonna do what Erica Badu has done as well. Erica Badu has given her personal number out, but she don't answer it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Eric, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. You be looking, you be tripping on it. I don't want you to I don't want you to call Tyrone. I don't want you to no. No, no. 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 She's doing a great job over 1600 uh, I, I want to thank you for coming man. in. Guys, I want y'all to, to support the commish, Ed Gray. He's all over. To push this button on social media, Facebook, he's all over. 
I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. I'm your host, Comedian Edwin Douglas, also with my special guest, Ed Gray. Family violence. How can we stop family violence? First, we must stop court-ordered visitation violation. Yes, each day hundreds, if not thousands of children are taken. Some are not seen for months, even years. And sadly, the kidnapper is the mother. Yes, mothers are moving out of town, out of cities, out of state, leaving fathers lost, confused, most become excessively stressed, but all are looking for solutions and answers. Some, however, are labeled as deadbeat because they stop paying child support. Sadly, some do snap. How can they find solutions, answers? Visit IGotMyRights.com to start your peace and serenity. To reconnect with your child, to become a father in their lives. Yes, victory over visitation can help find options and solutions, stop family violence, and give you an opportunity to be a father. IGotMyRights.com is a great place to start to gain victory over visitation. Your secret to ending family violence.